I'm Margaret Flowers, your host for today's conversation with BCRF investigator, Dr. Steffi Osterreich and patient advocate, Lee Pate. We've asked our guests to join us today to talk to us about lobular breast cancer, a not so rare, but somewhat understudied form of breast cancer. Dr. Osterreich, Steffi, if I may, I'd like to begin by asking you to introduce yourself to our audience and tell us a little bit about your research and tell us what is lobular breast cancer? Okay, thanks, Margaret. So I'm Steffi Österreich. I'm a professor at the University of Pittsburgh, and I'm the co-director there of the Women's Cancer Research Center, which is a collaboration between UPMC, Hillman Cancer Center, and McGee Women's Research Institute. So I'm interested, and for many years, I've been interested in hormone response and response to endocrine treatment in patients with estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. And as part of these studies, we have become very interested, like a decade ago, in invasive lobular breast cancer, which is mostly estrogen receptor positive, but we realized it is really understudied. It affects 10 to 15% of all patients with breast cancer. So it's like Margaret said, it's less frequent, but in the end, not, I mean, it affects thousands of patients each year. So the disease is characterized by loss of a molecule which keeps cells glued together, it's called eukaterin. And clearly it has uh, it's, has become obvious now that there are many molecular and clinical features which are different between ductal and lobular cancer. And we need to study it more to really understand and to find ways to uh, personalize medicine for patients with ILC. Uh, Lee Pate, um, tell us a little bit about your story, if you will, and how you became to you know, work with, with, Steph, with Steffi. Thank you. So I was diagnosed with lobular breast cancer in 2011, <clears throat> early stage. And um, when I started researching the disease, I realized that there was very little information out there and, and that lobular breast cancer wasn't really talked about. Um, and there was just a little, very, uh, very little information for a patient to try to inform our own healthcare. So I got eventually became more and more interested in advocacy. And I'm like, why is this? Um, it's, it's clear as a patient when you're going through treatment that the, the treatments that are equally applied um, are not always uh, as well received for patients with lobular. So for example, surgeries, um, screening and imaging um, is, is different. And so there are many times when being a patient with lobular breast cancer is like being the square peg being pounded into the round hole. You know, I mean, sometimes <clears throat> it works and sometimes if you pound on it hard enough, it, it can work and then sometimes it doesn't work at all. So I got more and more interested in becoming an advocate for, patient, uh, for patients with lobular breast cancer. I went and got some training and then learned about the first International Lobular Breast Cancer Symposium in Pittsburgh, which BCRF sponsored. And um, <clears throat> Steffi was one of the chairs. And so super excited and about 30 of us from all over the country flew into Pittsburgh. We had advocate meetings and we learned a lot and then um, out of that meeting, we uh, we continued to talk, and then we eventually got together and formed the Lobular, um, what became the Lobular Breast Cancer Alliance. And since that meeting, Steffi and I have worked very closely together um, on research and to try to, to build advocacy for Lobular Breast Cancer. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. So Steffi, this summer you hosted the second International Lobular Breast Cancer Symposium, virtually of course, mm -hmm. and I was really impressed by what seemed to be a lot of new information about the biology of lobular breast cancer. And I remember from the first symposium back in, I think it was 20, not 16, was it 2016? 16, 16. Wow. And I remember what one of the one of the big challenges was understanding the biology. Yeah. And so I was impressed by how much we learned about the biology of lobular breast cancer from the presentations at the, the symposium this summer. And I wanted to ask you, what, was, what were the big takeaways? What were the, the major things that came out of the meeting for you? Yeah, no, Molly, you're right. I think it's, you know, we 
had the second symposium. It was virtual. It was actually originally set up for 2020. Obviously, we couldn't have it, and then we moved on to a virtual symposium. The meeting was great. We had more than 700 participants from 35 countries. I was obviously the silver lining of the of the you know virtual meetings. People can call in from everywhere in the world, so that was fantastic. And like you said, a lot of progress has been made as compared to five years ago. I think. A lot of uh, uh, investigators have started to include Lobola models into their research, which really propelled, propelled discoveries. I think a lot of it we have learned in on the biology, on the basic biology, which actually resulted now in starting of a couple of clinical trials specifically for patients with ILC, which is exciting, which has the, the advocacy community has pushed a lot. I think there's a lot of uh, progress in uh, in pathology. You know what? How how are the pathologists involved in this? We can't just use old uh, methodologies to diagnosis, which very often was quite biased and subjective. And uh, I think now the idea of using molecular signatures and also using artificial intelligence to diagnose uh, lobular breast cancer or uh, subtypes of lobular, like the mixed and other subtypes, I think uh, there were some fantastic presentations. I think it is clear, and there was a great presentation there, it's not a very simple answer to diagnose lobular, but it is very often a continuum. So novel approaches, again, like molecular signatures and artificial intelligence, uh, is, that was very, very uh, impressive and very exciting. Uh, Lee already mentioned imaging. Imaging remains a big problem uh, for lobular tumors. I think both in the primary cancer setting as well as in the advanced setting, it is clearly not picked up by uh, not picked up as well by traditional imaging approaches. And we had a couple of great presentations on uh, novel methodologies of imaging. Um, including new tracers, just using new little molecules which stick which can recognize the lobular cells early on and uh, pick them up better and earlier on imaging. And then I do want to mention that for the longest time we couldn't make progress because we didn't have models, right? All the models were like ductal cancers. We just, even if you have an idea, you can't test it because you don't have a model. But again, I think we have made tremendous progress on this. And there are now multiple models where people can really study more faithfully the disease. And there are a couple of fantastic talks. I also want to say that now we have the next generation. We had new investigators who are like at the start of their career presenting and they say, okay, I'm going to start to read my lab studying lobular breast cancer research. I thought that was really exciting to see. And this will be the you know, the future. And I think they were they are really, really impressive. Thank you. And Lee, from your perspective as a patient and an advocate, you've, you know, you've seen, you've seen the field, you know, firsthand from your own diagnosis and, and the challenges that you met uh, trying to get information. The first, the first symposium now four or five years ago, what were the big takeaways from you? And, and more importantly, maybe, what, what are the, the questions that still remain for you that, that are really priorities from your perspective? Well, um, I, for me, it's, it's night and day almost between um, coming in from being diagnosed where there's no information available um, to the first symposium where it was just begun um, to be understood that it was a different disease and being discussed that way. And there was opportunity there to really uh, come together and advance interest in research. And at the same time, you know, patients came together online and built and started talking to each other through Facebook groups. And this ignited a catalyst, I think, to, um, to start, uh, organizing as patients to move forward. And so we've seen great progress on that front as well. Uh, the Lobular Breast Cancer Alliance is probably still the center flagship organization, um, but there are new organizations and movements that are starting up in Europe. Um, and we have advocates now in uh, Canada and Australia and all, all over the world and are even meeting as advocates 
uh, internationally, because we understand that it's very important to collaborate together and to ever go and pull in the same direction. There's limited patients. We have limited samples <laughs> to offer. There's limited resources and there's a very, you know, a, a very strong community researching and that we as advocates want to support that. So some of the biggest advances that I have seen and some of the things that I still think we need to work on is to identify priorities for research um, and then continue a collaborative international approach to work together as advocates, as researchers and clinicians to set some clear goals and to move things forward. Excellent, thank you. Um, so Steffi, you, you know, talked about a lot of the exciting things that came out of the meeting. Um, what for you are you most excited about in regards to the progress that we've made towards improving outcomes for patients with, um, lo with the lobular breast cancer? And what are the challenges that still keep you up at night? Yeah, I think what I'm most excited about is clearly the increased awareness. I think before, and this is on all ends, this is on the research, the physicians and the patients, that people now actually think, wow, what histology is it? I think that is different to even 10 years ago. I think that's what's, I think, most exciting because that results in everybody asking, well, what does it mean? What is different? So I think the awareness and I think, you know, us pushing this has really led to uh, at all front saying, OK, I need to know the histology. And the second thing is that uh, I think things have happened on the clinical end as well, that there are clinical trials now running specifically for patients with RLC, which came out of bench work, right, to say, OK, there is this overexpression of gene XYZ and we need to test this in a clinical trial. So I think that is uh, super exciting. And then finally, and Lee mentioned this already, I think what has happened over the last few years, and I'm really delighted about this, is that different groups have come together, not only within the US, but there are strong research on going on ILC in Europe. And uh, uh, I think people have now said, you know, we need to work on this together. I think the organization of the symposium this year was co-run by, uh, you know, investigators here in the US and investigators in Europe. And there is a new, as a next ILC symposium next year planned in Europe. And again, I think virtually we can do that now. We now, it is easier for us. Yeah, you know, we don't need to wait five months until we meet somewhere in person. We can just quickly get on the call and, and set this up. So I think the international collaboration which has developed over the last year has really opened a lot of new uh, avenues of research and I think I'm, I'm super excited about this. And where are you going next Steffi in the work in your lab what what questions are you trying to answer right now? Yeah so we have as you know we have a, a pretty big group so we try to tackle a couple of questions. I think uh, metastasis in ILC is a very big uh, topic for us. Um, you know, there are clearly unique features of the metastasis. It recurs later and it goes to uh, different sites in the body, right? Unusual sites like the peritoneal metastasis goes to the ovary. And we try to figure out why this is. Uh, we, uh, we don't understand it yet, but we hope that we can set up models and also work with patient advocates, again, I think sequencing of metastatic disease, I think, uh, will hopefully guide us in understanding this. We do like, you know, like many other groups, we have high hope for immune therapy, right? We do have, I think in general, the, the current dogma is that uh, immune infiltration is low in estrogen receptor positive disease and it is high and uh, much more targetable in triple negative breast cancer. But we do think there is a subset in uh, yeah. patients with ILC who also yeah. where the tumors are immune infiltrated. And if not, can we uh, try to get the immune cells into the tumor? So we have an active program ongoing on uh, trying to see if there is, if there are specific biomarkers 
for patients where the tumors might actually respond to immune therapy and what kind of immune therapy would it be? And I should also say that we collaborate with many other groups on model development, and there's lots of progress. Lots of progress has been made on model development for ILC, and you know these models are made available to other investigators. And uh, we are currently just finishing a large sequel, comprehensive characterization of these models, and this will all go online so everybody can access this and then pick their model for what pathway they want to choose and study. This is just wonderful. And Steffi, I want to thank you for the work that you've done in moving this field forward and your commitment and dedication and just the way that you have networked and brought people in um, collaboratively to, you know, be engaged in, in this really important, these really important questions. And, and Lee, I want to thank you. Um, you know, the, the, you were really behind the formation of the Lobular Breast Cancer Alliance, which is now, as we know, a, a very um, active and expanding organization and, and really stimulated other organizations and advocate, advocacy organizations to come together and start talking about this. So I really want to thank you both. BCRF has been so proud to support these meetings, to support your work. And um, I just want to thank you for joining us today and, and having this conversation with our audience. Yeah, and you know, I want to say, yeah, grateful to BCRF for funding research, ILC research, for funding the meetings, supporting the meetings, and yeah, for everything you guys do. It's, it's, it's so important. We're excited about the future of what can happen with lobular breast cancer, and it feels like we're just really on the brink of being able to have enriched clinical trials with lobular patients, with um, really more specific clinical trials to understand the disease and patients are only going to benefit moving forward from having personalized therapy that we need. Oh, thank you both for being here with us today.